What's up, everybody? Kevin here. I am known as the Fantasy Football Geek, founder and CEO of DFS Army, and I'm here to talk about and show you our latest tool for the 2018 NFL Fantasy Football season, the DFS Army Correlation Matrix. Now, Correlation Matrix, it sounds like a fancy word. What's going on here? So, why are we doing this tool? Let's start there. The key to winning tournaments in all daily fantasy sports, but especially football, and I'm not talking about making a cash lineup or anything like that, to winning a tournament is building a correlated lineup. Everybody knows it. Everybody understands it. But not many people have the data, not just to support it, but to show you who to stack with who to get the best correlation. And that's what we've got here. So just a little bit of background. Our correlation sheet is generated by running 10,000 simulations of the week one slate as it is right now. We don't do a generic correlations matrix like what's been floating around for, you know, a couple of years uh, online and various sites. What we're doing is actual correlation data for this specific game this week based on simulations. So it's really awesome and it's totally unique and it's something that's gonna win us a lot of money. So I'm gonna take you through week one a little bit and show you how to use it because it looks a little confusing, but it's not. So in essence, when you're setting up a stack on the Domination Station Optimizer, you have the option to pair up a quarterback with certain players. You have an option to disallow a quarterback from showing up with certain players and and we can use we can go by name so i just want to start with the new england uh, houston game because that's a very popular one and that's going to be a popular one to game stack in week one so let's take a look at deshaun watson as you can see you have deshaun watson right here and as you scroll over what these numbers are showing are the correlations so Sean Watson and Houston defense, in essence, no real correlation. Deshaun Watson and Deshaun Watson, a perfect correlation. In essence, player comparing to himself, as you can see here. And each player to himself is, is a perfect correlation. But as we move on, we see for each player on the team, this is, uh, I always look at QB RB1, which is Deshaun Watson with Lamar Miller. And as you can see here, it's not a terrible correlation 0.09 it's not a negative it's not something where you have to say i cannot use these two together in the same lineup it's actually not terrible because miller does catch passes he certainly has a chance of catching a pass for a touchdown therefore you know it's not the greatest highest correlation you're ever going to see but it's not terrible now let's move along here we have ryan griffin who is the te1 for the Texans, and you can see there's a pretty decent correlation at um, 0.22. As it goes up to the WR2, Will Fuller, we have a 0 0.30 correlation, and the highest correlation is with his WR1. All seems very obvious. But let's take a look at some negative correlations. Now, the most obvious one would be New England defense. If New England defense is doing well, Deshaun Watson is not. But here's your first surprise, or, or shouldn't be a surprise. Watson is actually quite correlated with Tom Brady. Now, we can't put them both in the same lineup together, but it tells the story of what correlations are really about. Um, if Brady is scoring and Watson, you know, the way game flows work in the NFL, um, if one team is scoring and the other team has to catch up, that's a positive thing. Um, so both teams tend to score more. Both quarterbacks benefit from good game from the opposing quarterback. So there, you know, as we go through some of these uh, pages, you're going to see that type of correlation in a lot of games where the quarterbacks are actually somewhat correlated to one another. And as we continue through, we see that the next best correlation with Deshaun Watson on New England is Gronk and then, of course, Hogan. So let's see if we could find a negative one. Burkhead. Sony Michelle, I mean, some of this doesn't really, this is just noise. There's basically no correlation here. Um, not a whole lot of correlation between Watson and the New England pass catchers, although it's pretty decent uh, with Gronk and maybe also Hogan. So there is some correlation there. And obviously that's really cool stuff. Now, 
One thing to note, you'll see there's numbers here connected to kind of players that aren't going to really play much. Just because there's a high number connected to somebody doesn't mean you should play them. Kiki Koti is not, you know, a... Uh, uh, he might be correlated with Deshaun Watson, but he's, you know, that means he might get two points instead of one. This is not a player. We have to first like the players in general and have a reasonable projection on them, period. Now let's take a look at Tom Brady. We're going to see similar numbers. Some correlation to Deshaun Watson. Some correlation with Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins is the highest. So if I'm starting, a, if I want to do a team stack or a game stack, starting with Brady, I might look at this and say, okay. Brady, 0.23 with Deshaun Watson, that's that's big, but I can't use Deshaun Watson. So let's see who the next biggest one is. All right, DeAndre Hopkins. So now I've got my, I'm starting up my game stack. I've got Brady Hopkins. Now let's look for who else. We can go, obviously he has very high correlation with his pass catchers. We can go with Gronk. We can go with Hogan. Can even go James White. The correlation with Burkhead not negative, so you can do something there. So any combination of these players is going to get you a very correlated lineup. So that's the basic gist of the correlation matrix. Now, part of what we're going to do is we're going to have articles come out that are going to kind of point out some really good correlated stacks, and we're going to do a lot of stuff with this information. But let's look at another one here just to see if these patterns continue from game to game because I suspect that there will be situations where they don't but um, a little bit of that will come as weeks progress and and our sim models get better data right now it's week one and it is very tricky some of these players are new and some of our assumptions will be wrong all right so let's look at Mitch Trubitsky and let's see how he's correlated in the Chicago Green Bay game with his own players and with players from the Packers. So Trubitsky, there we go. Chicago defense, no correlation there. Himself, let's look at significant players. Now, this is a little surprising. So the correlation with Jordan Howard is reasonable, not negative. Now, normally I would think that a player like Howard would have a negative correlation with the quarterback, but he doesn't. Um, Reasonably high correlation with the with one of the tight ends here. Let's see. Um, see the real tight end, yeah, Trey Burton, very high. Allen Robinson, very high. Um, we're looking for the real players on this team that we would actually use anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's highly correlated to Deion Sims because we're not using him in anything. But to see a nice correlation here with Allen Robinson, Trey Burton, it's exactly what you would expect. Now notice Trubitsky and Rogers, not as high of a correlation as the correlations were for Brady and DeAndre Hopkins, for example, or Brady and Deshaun Watson, which was much higher, 0.23. So that's interesting for whatever reason. And again, you'll note here, um, the it, it appears that Trubitsky is not really highly correlated with anybody on the Packers offense. It's, it's even surprisingly, I would say Devontae Adams, which tells me, you know, according to our numbers this week, this isn't the best game to game stack. There really isn't the positive correlation that you're looking for there. Now let's take a look at Aaron Rodgers and see if the numbers look any different. So Rodgers, let's see what we've got here. Anthony Miller, Allen Robinson, okay. So he's got some correlation with Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson having a big game. Maybe Rodgers is playing catch-up, throwing a little bit more. And he's got... The highest correlation with his tight end and his WR1 and WR2. Yeah, no shocks here, but it's good to see it and see the exact numbers, and we can kind of pick out the ones that we want to do. It's interesting that in some cases you see a quarterback wide receiver correlated 50.050 and other times 0.30, and it's interesting that that happens. Love these numbers. Um, let's look at the next game, and so on and so forth. This will be a thing where you go through every game. Um, here we go, Matt Stafford, uh, Jets versus the Lions. Theo Riddick, his pass-catching running back, 0 0.20, that's a fairly high correlation. LeGarrette Blunt, the goal-line bruiser, that gives you the negative correlation. So this is what I was looking for. 
I really, I'm, I'm glad we, we popped onto this game because generally a, a running back like LeGarrette Blunt is going to have a ne negative correlation. We want to avoid any sort of situation where LeGarrette Blunt would be paired up with Stafford because they're negatively correlated. We want positive correlation. Um, looking at some other spots here, Golden Tate, of course, his three wide receivers, uh, Galladay, MJJ, and Golden Tate, and the biggest correlation is with Marvin Jones Jr. So if I had to just look at this number and set up a stack, I might go, I might start off with Matt Stafford to Marvin Jones Jr. Because that's the that's the highest correlated player. Maybe Golden Tate or add these two into some sort of a stack with him. I'm not using, see, I'm not letting this determine players that I'm going to use this week if I wasn't planning on using them. So I have no intention of using Theo Riddick this week. So the fact that there's a high correlation there means nothing to me. And that it shouldn't mean nothing to you. Um, all right, let's take a look at Sam Darnold. We've got Detroit defense, of course, very negative. We already know this. We don't stack, uh, we don't play a quarterback against the opposing defense. And a decently high correlation with the opposing quarterback. But we've seen higher numbers from other players. Um, similar numbers here. Tate and Jones Jr. and Marvin Jones Jr. both function as reasonable team stack mates uh, alongside. And let's see who on the Jets would correlate really well with the quarterback. I would assume the wide receivers. Here we go. Anderson, Curse, who is actually not playing this week, it doesn't look like. Um, and Nunwa. So basically, it's a tricky one to pro project the Jets because we don't know who is the primary. I think it's going to be Robbie Anderson, but we'll see. We don't know the snap counts, the snap shares yet. Nothing has been established this season, so these numbers are obviously going to be super preliminary. But um, Darnold with himself. Bilal Powell, positive correlation. Isaiah Crowell, positive correlation. So one thing that's important to note is, again, we see in another circumstance that it's not a negative correlation to have a quarterback with his own running back in there. If you do it, it's not a big deal, especially these guys who catch passes. Now, not the LeGarrette Blunt, that's the negative one. But if, if the guy's pass catches, all good. It's worth noting that you really only need to look at the quarterback position, but you can look at one, the other spot that you might consider taking a peek at is the defense, the team defense, because this is also a telling statistic because people often don't realize this. There are negative correlations between the defense and players on the same team. So Detroit defense is actually slightly negative, cor negatively correlated with Matt Stafford. And it's certainly not a positive correlation and it's slightly negative. There's a positive correlation though with the bruising running back. And this is something we talk about a lot. There's negative correlation with the wide receiver core. Negative, negative. So what this is telling us is we do not want to have this defense with offensive players from this team outside of the running back. We want to avoid stacking a quarterback with that quarterback's defense. Let's see if that holds true for the Jets. Um, Jets, Sam Darnold, not as negative. Why that happens, not sure. But um, if you look at the correlations, obviously, you would think that the running back position is very positively correlated with the defense. And as you can see here, there is some positive correlation there between Jets defense and Kroll and Pell. A little bit negative, let's say, or or not much negative with the pass catchers, but not positive, a little bit negative here. So in essence, what we're seeing here is, again, we don't really want to mix a defense with offensive players outside of a running back. Back in the day, we used to use defense and tight end together, but uh, not tight end, and defense and kickers together, but we don't do that anymore because we don't have kickers to worry about on FanDuel or DraftKings. All right, let's do one more. I just want to kind of pound this home. And this tool is available on DFSArmy.com for VIP subscribers. It will be here every week. 
and I pro the data will become more accurate as each week progresses. When you run sims, when you run simulations, the data that you acquire each week makes them more accurate. Right now, it's week one. We, we are, there's a lot of estimating going on in there. All right, so here we go. Uh, even with all these estimates, I mean, these numbers are working out exactly as they should. So here we go, Giants, Jaguars. Let's take a look at Blake Bortles. This is a fascinating one. Bortles. We got the running back core. Fournette, 0.09. Not a, like a huge correlation there. Tight end. Expected. Wide receivers. Well correlated, all about the same. Very negative uh, correlation with Giants defense, of course. And then, you know, similar numbers as we've seen before. Um, very positive correlations with the Giants wide receiving core particularly with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Um, Eli Manning, negatively correlated with Jaguars defense. Positive with Bortles, so if Manning is having a good game. It's, good, it's a good chance that Bortles is also having a good game. And this is interesting, Jaguars defense. I just want to see Jaguars and Eli Manning. Eli Manning Jaguars. So I, I wonder if if you're playing Jaguars defense, you probably. I'm trying to think with Blake Bortles. Where's Jaguar? Yeah, if you're playing Jaguars defense again, Fournette, the correlation is higher than it is with the quarterback. So defense, running back in this case is probably a slightly better stack than like a triple stack with Bortles and Fournette. Now, part of that's probably because Fournette has not been a, you know, an extreme pass catcher throughout his career. Um, all right, jumping back down to Eli Manning, you can see as you go across to Eli Manning's pass catchers, let's see, see he's got a, a higher correlation with Sequan Barkley than Bortles does with Fournette. And that's probably cause, because um, Barkley is expected to be used a little bit more in the passing game than what Fournette is on the Jaguars Fournette sometimes comes out in favor of TJ Yeldon whereas the Giants don't have anybody I think Barkley's going to be out there all the time non-stop I mean maybe I don't know they don't really have a third down back I guess it's Goldman but terrible so here we go, Evan Ingram, high correlation with Sterling Shepard and Odell Beckham and, and, and so on and so forth. So there you have it, the DFS Army correlation matrix, actual numbers acquired through simulations. This will improve every single week. We're gonna get more and more accurate, but this is awesome. This gives you an idea of how to do, set up stacks. And I think it's gonna be a great deal for mass multi-entry um, tournament lineups. The Domination Station gives us the ability to set up stacks with specific player names so we can get very down and dirty with these things. Um, good luck this week, everyone. I just wanted to bring this out to you before um, before Sunday morning so we can get a, get a start on getting those lineups together.